Woo. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ash, your host, and today we'll be diving into Vampire Night, a show that I religiously watched as an 11 year old and its theme song had me at a chokehold. Not to mention, I had completely blocked out the fact that Kaname was related to Yuki from my mind and soul. The mental gymnastics with this one was real because while watching season 2 specifically, I realized that as a child, I did not retain any of the plot and lore going on in the show other than the love triangle and the way that Yuki says and pronounces Kaname's name in the English dub. This video might end up being a little longer than usual because I will be also going over the manga. So take your time watching this whenever you can and um, I will also be spoiling from the get-go. So if you really want to watch this on your own because maybe you never watched it as a kid, go ahead and watch this and then come back if you want. Um, but yeah, get ready for the Vampire Night ride. <laughs> I'll introduce you all to the main cast before we get to the basics. This right here is Kaname Kuron. He's not like other vampires. He's a pureblood, a rare pureblood. He's also a dinosaur vampire. He's like ancient, okay? He's an ancient vampire that got resurrected by Rido Kuron, a descendant of his, by having his heart pierced and blood given to him. Oh, and not to mention, Rido tossed a toddler to him, also named Kaname, for him to eat up. This is Yuki Cross. She's not like other girls. She's actually a pureblood princess who has had a crush on her own brother since she was a little girl, but we'll get into that later if you've never seen this dumpster fire of an anime. She's also super nosy and she tries to help her main love interest a lot of the time, Zero. I know Kaname might be in anime, in the anime considered her main love interest, but in the manga, he kind of feels more like a side hoe. You know, so that's why I'm kind of considering Zero her main love interest. Next up is Zero, a human turned vampire who also works as a vampire hunter. He hates pure bloods passionately and wants to rip their throats open with his bloody roast. Not to mention, he can be a little. Oh my god! Then we also have other side characters like Kind Cross, Yuki's adoptive father, and the headmaster of Cross Academy, Yagri, Zero's teacher, and also a vampire hunter, the aristocrat vampires, Hanabusa Aigyo, Kaname fanboy who gets bitch slapped a lot by him, um, controls ice, gives me a serious honey senpai vibes. I don't know why, maybe they have the same voice actor, I don't really think so. Uh, this is Ruka Soen, she loves Kaname, has the ability to create illusions. This is Akatsuki kind, who loves Ruka, and eventually ends up with her in the manga. He has the ability to control fire, and gives me Mori Senpai vibe. This is Senri Shiki, he controls blood, and is a model. And, spoiler alert, later in season 2, we learn that he is the biological son of Rido Kuran. This is Rima. I kind of forgot her last name, but she controls lightning and she is also a model and I believe she is Senri's love interest. This is Takuma Ichijo, Kaname's childhood best friend and the grandson of the senator Ichio Ichijo. Ichiru Kiryu, he is Zero's long lost brother and he is delusional because he is in love with the vampire that massacred his family. As you can tell, a lot of people in this anime have issues. This is Rido Kuran, a pureblood who is obsessed with his younger sister Judy Kuran, aka Yuki's biological mother. <sighs> Finally, Shizuka Hiyo, the woman who massacred Zero's family and made Ichiru her bitch. Now let's start off with the basics of this vampire world and the society that's presented to us and everything that I never paid attention to as a kid because this was kind of like the shoujo world's twilight and I really didn't realize that there was a lot of information being thrown at us. I just, I was 11. I was stupid. The setting. The events of Vampire Night take 10,000 years after the apocalypse. The apocalypse, which is caused by climate change, I think, it's mentioned here and there in the manga, um, has resulted in the human DNA to mutate to the point where the first purebloods are born. Many purebloods start turning regular humans into vampires and a bit get carried away and kind of just cause chaos. And there's absolutely nothing that humans can do at this point 
about it. You can't kill them. Unlike purebloods, the regular vampires in this universe don't have the ability to turn humans into vampires like themselves. The vampire hierarchy goes something like this. Purebloods are at the top. After that comes the aristocrats. Then comes the regular vampires. And after that is um, humans, like former humans. And then there are level E's who are former humans who got turned and are losing their mind. Okay. And those vampires are usually the ones that get hunted down and killed. Vampires in this universe don't glow or burn in sunlight and aren't afraid of garlic. They can eat and drink like normal humans. Purebloods can control the minds of not only vampires, but humans too. They can convert people into vampires and both humans and vampires naturally gravitate towards uh, purebloods, which makes them easy to manipulate and to make humans and regular vampires or aristocrat vampires do anything for the pure blood, any sort of bidding. Their blood can help cure diseases, and we see this with Kaname and his little lore and how people in the village he was in demanded his blood as an alternative to medicine. It's something in the manga, it's not in the anime. Purebloods in the society have a lot of pressure on them and a lot of duties to attend to. I don't really know what these duties are other than the fact that when Yuki gets turned into a vampire, she's expected to do certain things as a Kuron princess and to produce an heir to keep the bloodline going. Purebloods can only produce purebloods with other purebloods. For example, the weird Kuron clan, for some reason, has chosen to take part in inbreeding and incest when there are other clans. There are 19 other pureblood clans in total that they could probably arrange marriage with. For example, when Juri Kuran and Haruka Kuran uh, got married, Rido Kuran, the eldest of the three siblings, was arranged to marry Shizuka Hio of the Hio clan, right? Sarah Shirabuki is arranged to marry Ori, I think that's his name, uh, who aren't related at all. And there are other examples in the manga, so I have no idea why the Kuran family is ancestral. No, no idea, no clue. It's fucking weird, bro. Anyway, like I said, there are up to 19 pureblood clans, and many of them have chosen to go into slumber since they can't seem to die unless they arrange a hit from the Hunters Association. Um, but... Killing a pureblood vampire who isn't on the hunter's uh, roster is a risk. Plus, purebloods can always be resurrected, kind of like how ancient dinosaur Kaname Kuran was. Oh, and if you've been turned by a pureblood vampire, sucks for you because you can't kill them. It's a reason why Kaname can't deliver the final blow to Rido in season 2 and why Zero can't directly harm Shizuka Hiyo in season one. The Kuran family in particular used to be monarchs that controlled the vampire society for many, many years. And 2000 years before the events of Vampire Night, they had chosen to give control of the vampire society to what we know as the Senate. Let's talk about Kaname Kuran. Who is he? And Who's his lover? Kaname Kuran is the first pure blood of the Kuran bloodline. He is over 10,000 years old and had a lover during that same time when pure bloods first emerged, uh, who ended up sacrificing her life, specifically her heart, that she threw in a furnace which ended up becoming the Origin Metal, a source of forging weapons that can eventually kill vampires, including pure bloods. She did this because the purebloods were getting a little too wild and just turning everybody into vampires. And she, despite wanting to find and bringing all the purebloods together and wanting purebloods to get along, saw that purebloods were just doing more damage to their society and they weren't trying to coexist with humans at all. So she kind of had the same ideologies as Kind Cross of wanting to have a human society and vampire society coexist. But thanks to her sacrifice, the Vampire Hunter Association was founded. The Cross Academy was built by Kind Cross's ancestors on top of the furnace where the unknown vampire had thrown her heart. Well, I don't know her name. We never know her name. Um, the author never mentions or gives a name for this lover, so I guess I'll just call her love a girl for now. Kaname loved this woman and felt as if his life was meaningless after her death, so he went into a long slumber after soul-searching and not being able to escape his loneliness. Later, he was awoken from his slumber by Rido Kuran, like I mentioned, who wanted to use his ancestor for ho for his own little evil plot to get to Juri Kuran, probably. I don't know. Um, Rido had brought 
uh, Juri's newborn baby, who was also named Kaname, and had offered that as a sacrifice to this resurrected Kaname. This old Kaname was so hungry because he had been asleep for thousands and thousands of years that he just he just ended up devouring this baby Kaname. Baby Kaname gone. Rip. Rip Kaname. He was so weak that in order to go on to stay alive, he had to replace the baby. So he reverted himself to a baby form, which then Juri and Haruka ended up raising. They both knew that this was the ancient Kaname. They knew what Rido had done to their baby. They still raised Kaname as their own son. Now, the thing I don't understand is how the Kaname Kuran bloodline continued on because we don't see him in the manga get with anyone else so it's a mystery to me maybe he like uh, did he find another pure blood i i don't know okay because he was the only one uh, when pure bloods were first a thing they were one of their own kind pure bloods were hard to find so his lover the lover girl had to go all around the world to find and gather other pure bloods so before she did that there were no other people that Kaname knew that were purebloods. So I, I I don't know. That's the one big question I had when I was reading the manga. I was like, what? Because I've done this big reveal of Kaname being actually, you know, Yuki's distant, ancient ancestor relative doesn't change the fact that they're still related, okay? He's, instead of being her brother, he's her great, great, great by 10,000 years grandpa, okay? So... It's still fucking weird. Anyway, before Kaname entered his slumber, he did some research on ways to try and convert vampires back into humans. It didn't go anywhere, so he ended up jotting down whatever research he had done so far and putting it away in the Kuran estate. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because towards the end of the manga, Hanabusa ends up finding the journal uh, at the Kuran estate and ends up continuing the research on behalf of Yuki's request. So the part kind of like goes really fast in the manga and the ending is like really rushed. So I just kind of want to fill in the blanks early on so it just doesn't feel like I just whooshed. The first two weapons that were created from the furnace or the origin metal furnace uh, were the Artemis, the staff that Yuki uses, and Bloody Rose, the, the gun that um, Zero uses. Let's go over the twins curse. This is mentioned heavily in the manga and anime. It's supposed to be a curse cast upon hunters, but from my understanding from the manga, that's kind of bullshit because there is no direct curse. Uh, rather, whenever a hunter has twins, one of the twins ends up eating the other one in the womb. Mainly because most of the powers that these hunters have, you know, the ability to not only wield a vampire hunting weapon, but also, you know, be a little quick on their feet when it comes to fighting vampires, uh, are from the pureblood vampire who gave up her life. So it makes most hum hunters not fully human and not fully vampire. But because no hunters have twins, Everyone just assumes that the Kiryu twins are an omen. I know I'm spoiling a lot of stuff early on, but one day, um, Ancestor Kaname, while on a car ride with Kid Takuma, spots the Kiryu twins at a park and he starts plotting to use them to protect Yuki. Yeah, like this little shit stain saw those two having fun and he knew that they were from a hunter family and he was like, Whoa, they're twins! And maybe I can use them to, you know, protect my little sister. I'm a fuck up their life for my little sister. Meaning the mastermind who had Shizuka Hiyo's lover killed by the Kiryu family in season one wasn't entirely Rido Kuran. So instead, what Kaname did was, um, if you remember from season one, and don't worry, I will do recaps in this video, but for those of you who've already watched this, if you remember in um, season one, Shizuka was kept in captivity most of her life. So when her lover is hunted down and killed, somebody let her free. And the person that let her free was none other than Kaname Kuron, ancient Kaname Kuron. He let Shizuka free and Shizuka went and killed Zero's family. I Believe me, Zero hates Kaname from the bottom of his heart. For those of you who are lost, it'll make more sense when I start recapping and refreshing your memory about this um, anime. The manga goes in depth with Kaname's little schemes and his little evil plots. And I just want to say for those of you who had a bad feeling about Kaname, 
you were right because this motherfucker is sleazy as hell. Kind Cross, who is also the headmaster of Cross Academy, ends up eventually taking over the Hunters Association as the new president after he slays the current president who goes berserk after consuming too much pure blood. Pure blood blood. Other hunters that we might care about in these series include Yagiri, Zero, and Kaito who's in the manga only. Most hunters have had to kill their loved ones. Uh, Yagiri had to kill his fiance after she was turned into a level E. Same with Kaito with his older brother and unfortunately Zero was the one who was turned and contemplated ending his own life countless times to the point where Yuki had to make him hate her and chase after her to give him a purpose to continue on living. So, I hope you're ready for a recap after all that basic information that you might need. We start off the anime in Cross Academy, where the classes are split between the day class, humans who are oblivious to the true nature of the night class. The school has a disciplinary community. Um, in the manga, they're called the Guardians. Uh, instead of having a hunter on premise, this way they can be peaceful with the vampires while keeping them under check. So in the manga, eventually that gets changed um, because well, there was a fight in season two. And so at that point, Zero is a hunter on premise and he's given the go to shoot any vampire that either drinks someone's blood or is misbehaving. But in season one and two, we, you know, we have Yuki and Zero just playing hall monitors basically. Zero and Yuki are the only members in this committee because they know the existence of vampires. Season 1 is about Yuki uncovering Zero's secret, him turning into a vampire, his parents getting murdered by a pureblood, and that he has a twin brother named Ichiru who's with a woman named Shizuka Hiyo. Shizuka Hiyo is a pureblood, as I mentioned, who killed Zero's parents and now has possessed her distant family member, Maria Kuranai, to attend Cross Academy. Her goal was to find Kaname Kuran, drink his blood so she can become even stronger and take down Rito Kuran for having her lover killed. As we all know, Kaname eventually kills Shizuka and pins it on Zero. Or rather, he pretends that he has nothing to do with her death, despite the fact that Hanabusa had seen him. Um, and not to mention, everyone knew in the vampire world and in the hunter association world that Kiryu had motive, you know, to go after Shizuka because Shizuka had killed his family. Yuki's past is still a blur and she's consistently fighting her fear of vampires that started from that one snowy night. A vampire had tried attacking her before Kaname killed him, so she's devoted to him. He is her god, like down bad energy, okay? Like the way Yuki talks about Kaname in the anime before she turns into a vampire is insane. She worships this man. That's a good girl. Oh, my ears burn! I guess I should mention how in this universe, a vampire's thirst can be quenched by their lover or someone that they love. So Zero's is Yuki, Yuki's is Zero, because whenever she drinks Kaname's blood, he always mentioned how she drinks too much and that she's always constantly hungry before he realizes that she might have the hots for someone that isn't her relative. And for those of you who have read the manga and you're like, no, she definitely loved Kaname. Guys, there's so many panels where she's like constantly contradicting herself. She'll say Kaname out loud, but inside, internally, she's like, zero. Come on. Yuki is pretty lost and sticks her nose in shit that isn't her business and ends up creating more trouble than necessary. Although there are times like when Zero's teacher Yagri shows up to kill Zero and Yuki gets in the way trying to convince him that Zero hasn't lost his sanity yet and that he isn't a level E yet. Zero's body rejects blood tablets so he has to eventually get blood from Yuki. He's breaking school rules and Kain chooses to pretend that he cannot see because he loves Zero and Yuki and he doesn't want to see Zero turn into a level E. So he pretends he cannot see that. And I'm pretty sure Kaname doesn't raise anything up because he knows that Zero is, without realizing, drinking Yuki a pure blood's blood. So from season one, well, since Zero was a kid, Kaname has just been putting his plan into action. If only Zero could get some blood of the pure blood that turned him, his bloodthirst might die down and his sanity might return. But wow, would you look at that? Lucky for Zero, because halfway through season one, someone he knows 
returns and comes and starts attending Cross Academy, who I mentioned, Shizuka, possessing Maria Kurenai's body. She starts causing some sort of panic in Cross Academy with the night class. They feel really on edge by her. They can tell and maybe sense a pure blood, but Maria doesn't smell like a pure blood, but they know something's off. Um, she also starts teasing Zero, taunting him, and of course, she's come to the academy with Ichiro, so Zero is on the edge seeing his brother. Uh, Takuma's uh, grandpa drops by the academy asking for Kaname's blood, which everybody takes offense to since that's a big no-no in the vampire society. Nothing crazy happens, Hanabusa gets bitch slapped like always, and everybody carries on. Zero is unable to shoot Shizuka once she returns back to her body since she controls him, and was the vampire to turn him, right? Remember, pure bloods can control other people, their mind, and if you were turned by a particular vampire, you can't cause them harm. You can't strike the uh, final blow. And so he can't. He can only harm her here and there. He can like slash her, but he can't deliver the final blow. She gets away from Zero and Ichiru and Zero start squabbling. Also, um, this whole like Zero not being able to harm Shizuka was like a really good way of indirectly trying to show the audience why Kaname can't hurt Rido because in the anime in season 2, the dialogue hints at Kaname not really being Kaname Kuron. Uh, I really do think that they should have named ancient Kaname something else, but um, I think it was a great setup. I, I personally think that the author and the directors for the manga and the anime, they were really good at hooking you in, right? Anytime you were starting to get bored, they just threw in something. And I think the foreshadowing was really, really good, but back to the plot. Um, Shizuka walks off into a room that Kaname was in, and well, as you all remember, he kills her. He finishes her off, and Hanabusa is nearby, and he knows and sees this. He's the only witness to this crime. Ichiru fucks off to find Shizuka, and she dies in his arms, letting him know that she was happy that she never turned him into a vampire, since her previous lover was a servant and she wanted to know if he liked her for her because pure bloods, you know, have that natural charm and whatnot. Same thing happens, spoiler alert, between Sarah and Takuma in, in the manga. After Shizuka kind of just poofs and turns into dust and dies, Zero and Ichu start arguing. Ichu fucks off and as he fucks off, um, Akatsuki and Yuki run into the room and just assume that Zero was the one who killed Shizuka. The tension between vampires and Zero increases, but instead of him being persecuted for it, he ends up getting invited uh, to a soiree as a bodyguard. There's a ball at Cross Academy and Zero ends up rejecting the glasses girl. Cause that hurt me. I was like, oh my god, give her a chance, just dance with her Zero, but that hurted, man. Anyway, um, the dress that Kaname gave Yuki, well, that particular dress belonged to Yuki's mother, Juri. So, yeah, it's just kind of like a little, little detail I wanted to mention that I never noticed as a kid that I was like, whoa. So, season one ends with Shizuka dead. Zero slowly turning into level E because he never got to drink Shizuka's blood. Yuki is clueless as usual. Yuki was beyond clueless in season 1 and 2. She stops being clueless, kind of, in the manga. Kaname is plotting something, as usual, and he offers his blood to Zero to prevent him from turning into level E. And the Senate is making a move by employing Ichiru. What are they planning? I don't know, maybe the resurrection of Rido Kuran. Season 2. Season 2 is all about Rido Kuran's slow return. The Senate has been slowly planning for his return and are trying to get his original body back because uh, his fight with Kaname, Kaname fucked him up real good when he was a kid after Haruka was killed in front of him. They plan on using his biological son, uh, Senri Shiki, who's also a student who attends Cross Academy, is really close and friends with Kaname to kind of infiltrate and get closer to Yuki eventually. So here's a rundown on Rido Kuran. He is obsessed, as I mentioned earlier, with his younger sister, Judy Kuran, Yuki's mother. Uh, when Judy and Haruka, who are siblings, end up getting married, Rido couldn't handle the rejection. And even after his marriage arrangement with Shizuka Hiyo, he still chose to go after Judy and Haruka. 
from my understanding, he had Shizuka's lover's name entered in the hunter's roster to be killed off. And the, you know, Kiryos took the job, but after Shizuka lost her lover, she kind of went nutso and he didn't end up with her. And instead, he ended up marrying an aristocrat, uh, which was Senri's mother. And I think he, like, traumatized that lady he did something really bad because if you remember in season two she's not okay she's not all there um we don't have a picture of senri's mother's experience with rito and senri doesn't even acknowledge uh rito as a father figure because he was never there he was killed by as i mentioned kaname after killing haruka so why was he even there why did he even attack haruka and uh, kaname well he was trying to go after a five-year-old yuki he came to the kuran estate to take away yuki so if he can't have jewelry he's gonna take yuki and that's what he's gonna try in season two wacko so after Haruka dies protecting the family jewelry gives up her life force to turn yuki into a human and helps her forget her life as a vampire she just erases her memories um and her pure blood responsibilities and all the burden is kind of just gone she's free she's free to do whatever she wants as a human to go to school just live life normal right the reason why jury did, did this in my opinion is because we kind of get a little bit into her thought process in the manga like way later like in volume 16 or something uh we learned that jury for a little bit had requested her grandpa to just live life as a regular human so she pretended to be a human and attended high school but unfortunately haruka showed up her brother and her human friends were like hey your brother's always hanging around you like by the end of season two rito leaves senri's body and is back in his own body uh kaname destroys the senate which, like I mentioned, is not a good thing because it results in vampires just going crazy. Yuki has all of her memories back of being a vampire and Kaname being her older brother, you know. He's my... my older brother! Your... siblings? Hanabusa tries to dig into the Kuran family. To no luck, everything just burns up. Cross Academy is under attack by Level E produced by the Hunters Association. The Senate and the Hunters Association president were working together to bring Rito Kuran back and to attack Cross Academy. The school is shut down and a battle with Rito begins. Like I mentioned, Kind Cross ends up battling with the president after the president goes berserk after having too much pure blood. Blood, I think it's Rito's blood or just vampire blood in general. In the anime, that doesn't happen. In the anime, it is Takuma's grandpa who ends up killing um, the president instead. I think the final battle with Rito is so much cooler in the manga. Zero doesn't need Yuki to cut him to control the bloody rose. He just lets the gun go wild and do its own thing. I just wish that whole fight scene was animated instead of what we got because there's just a lot of crazy vines just exploding. Both Yuki using the Artemis and Zero using the Bloody Rose take down Rito. Before Yuki and Zero defeat Rito at the rooftop of the night class dorms, Ichiro visits Zero while he is locked up, slowly turning into a level E. And he encourages his brother to drink his blood and make himself whole again. And since he had drunk um, Chizuka's blood, there must be some still in his system, so he's hoping that he can help his brother not turn into a level E. He's also injured by Rito Kuran after being resurrected, you know, and he tried getting revenge for Shizuka, Hio, for getting Shizuka's lover killed and making Shizuka sad, blah blah blah. And so, you know, the revenge didn't work out well. He got, he got really badly injured by pure blood. I don't know what Ichiru was thinking. Ichiru, you're human. You're human, please. You're like Shinbachi in Gintama. You know, everybody is all like aliens and crazy. You're just human. Chill out. Why do you think I shot you with a bloody rose? You have to, Zero. I won't do it. Please don't die. I don't want to lose anybody else. Hearing that makes me so happy. This particular scene was so tough to watch because Zero is this series' punching bag. He's lost everyone close to him including Yuki, the girl he loves and didn't want turning into a vampire. Has turned out to always been a vampire. She was a pureblood to make things worse. You know, his 
family's dead. His brother is now dying and he has to drink his blood now to make himself whole. And Ichiru being alive was the last thing giving Zero some sort of purpose to keep going on and to stay alive. And now that his brother is dying, Zero has no reason to keep living on. You know, he wants to give up. That's why when the series is wrapping up, Yuki starts saying things when she turns into a vampire that she really doesn't really mean at all. And I'm not gonna lie, as a kid, I didn't get this particular scene that I'm gonna play for you. Coming here to talk, you don't really think that'll make a difference, do you? <laughs> Discussing things like turning humans into vampires. But of course you, transformed from a vampire into a human. On the other side of this door, I sense an arrogant pureblood who does nothing but toy with people. Yes, Zero. I'm glad you understand. The Yuki you once knew is gone. Because the vampire Yuki completely devoured her. It didn't help that I didn't understand this as a kid, and not to mention a lot of manga readers, I feel like, misinterpreted Yuki's dialogue a lot. In the manga, what you start seeing is what Yuki says to Zero, and even to Kaname. What she says is the opposite of what she's thinking. Her internal monologue gives you a different insight to Yuki's mental state and how she feels about certain things. In that scene, she says all those nasty things and even towards the end of season 2, after the fight with Rito at the rooftop, she says things like, I crave for Kaname's blood only and um, you should chase after me or you should hunt me down, Zero. Um, you know, and all that stuff. She says all those things is to kind of rile Z uh, Zero up and to give him a purpose to keep living on. She also kind of gives in to being Kaname's fiance, but like I said, her mind is always wandering to Zero. It's it's a case of where she, as a pure blood, is expected to do certain things, which is also be Kaname's fiance, <laughs> versus what she wants uh, and she can't do that anymore because she's not human anymore and she's not a regular vampire so you see this internal conflict and her own little struggles in the manga a lot more than in the anime. Takuma is tasked with keeping Rido's body safe and helping him get on campus. Of course when shit goes down he feels as if he let down Kaname so he takes up the task of bringing down his own grandfather. During the battle, Takuma ends up getting hurt badly, and a pureblood named Sarah Shirabuki ends up taking him in her care. So that's where things end with Takuma in season 2. But back to Yuki. At first, Yuki hates being a vampire. She can't cry in public, she can't engage in casual conversation with other vampires other than Hanabusa. Her life as a human is at odds with her vampire memories and the responsibilities that come with it. And She's lived most of her life as a human, so suddenly being reminded that she was born a vampire takes a huge toll on her. And you see Rima in the manga and Ruka feel really bad for her. Ruka has gotten over her, well she hasn't gotten over her love and crush for Kaname, but she kind of feels for Yuki a lot and tries to help Yuki and take care of Yuki because she knows that Yuki can't go back and have her life be the way it used to be because that's what Yuki really badly wants in the manga uh, is for things to go back the way they used to be and unfortunately that's not how things are right. Back to the ending recap of season 2, Rito is defeated, Cross Academy shuts down its night class temporarily, Kaname leaves with Yuki to return to the Kuran estate, Rima and Senri head out to find Takuma, Akatsuki and Ruka start running errands for Kaname. Zero satiates his thirst and prevents the loss of his sanity by drinking Ichiru's blood. He also has acquired new powers thanks to all the pure blood blood that he has ingested. Shizuka Hiyo's through Ichiru, uh, Kaname, and Yuki. So he's overloaded with some crazy pure blood in his system and is much stronger than your average uh, hunter and vampire. Yuki tries to declare Zero as her enemy to give him purpose to keep on living, to hunt her down, and the anime ends on a cliffhanger with Kaname and Yuki going their separate way and Zero being in the academy. Also, um, yeah, I wrote down why the final uh, episode for season 2 is titled Vampire Knight. So we finally learn what a vampire knight is. Well. Since Yuki is a Kuron princess, and cause Kaname is going through the trouble of wrecking this hunter family apart, 
and is looking for the perfect, perfect person to look after Yuki and protect her, ended up going through the trouble of making Zero this all-powerful vampire hunter. So he's not only a vampire, he's also a hunter. So he's he has access to weapons that can kill not only aristocrats and regular vampires and levelies, but purebloods too, because purebloods are really hard to kill, right? So he has, in a way, ended up creating a knight for Princess Yuki. Therefore, Vampire Knight. That's... Yeah, that's Vampire Knight. Alright, so there's a one year time skip. Kind Cross has taken over the role of being the Hunter Association's president. Um, he's under house arrest by the Human and Vampire Society so they can figure out what to do with him. Zero lives off campus now and during the daytime he attends school and at nighttime he tries to hunt down as many vampires as he can to satiate his bloodthirst. His body can finally now handle blood tablets which is great but he binges on those things all the time. Yuki never leaves the mansion ever and well, she's not allowed to because Kanrei doesn't want her going anywhere because no one knew about the existence existence of a younger sister of Kaname. So he's just trying to keep everything under wraps, I guess. He's also starting to reach out to other purebloods around this time. A war is brewing because our favorite dinosaur Kaname went ahead and destroyed the Senate. So the Senate ceases to exist and the Vampire Society is on the verge of collapse. There's no law and order. It's just all chaos and he's just... He's just hanging around, I guess. The hunter's work has been doubled and they also have to work in duos. So no solo hunts other than Zero. He is the exception because, you know, he's a vampire. But every other hunter has to team up. So two of them go in the field that time because shit's crazy. Hanabusa's father helps out Kaname by providing aid wherever he can and digs up information on the Senate and any other information Kaname wants. He's just helping him out and Yuki in any way he can. He's like a really good uncle in a way to them. Crazy lockdown shutdown that happened in school. And one of the humans that remembers this is Yori. She kind of has a little bit of screen time in season 1 and 2 but she's supposed to be Yuki's human friend. And the only reason I'm mentioning her is because she is going to play a small part in a soiree that's going to happen soon. So Yuki can't satiate her bloodthirst with just Kaname's blood, and he acknowledges this. He is down to be a third wheel. He says that he doesn't mind if there's someone else in her heart, and he doesn't. But let's be honest, Zero fucking hates Kaname that he will shoot him on sight. Okay? So, no. It's, it's a mess, okay? I really do encourage you to read the manga. It's a mess. Um, sir... Like, when I was reading this, I was like, Sir, your sister loves Zero. Let her go. Let her be free of pure blood duties. Please. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> Yuki is lonely and easy to sculpt into whatever Kaname wants or any other vampire wants, really. She's, she's still kind of gullible at this point, and honestly, she gets swayed easily. But whatever, that's Yuki for you. Luckily, she, you know because she's cooped up. Luckily for her, there's going to be a soiree. So Yuki can finally go outside for once. But at the soiree, there'll be a big chance that she'll run into Zero because he has been appointed as one of the hunters that'll, you know, be a guard or security at the place. Zero is accompanied by his new partner, Kaito. Kaito doesn't play a huge role, but he's also a new assistant professor at Cross Academy. And so that's where he meets Yori and encourages her to go meet Yuki and that he would help provide per transportation and a means to meet Yuki at the soiree. He sneaks her in and Zero is pissed, but rightfully so, because all the vampires are being creepy with Yori. And if even one vampire hurts Yori, it would give the Hunters Association reason to kill more vampires and add them onto roster. So Kaito is clearly trying to use Yori for that purpose. Sarah, the pureblood approaches Yori, but before she can do or say anything, Zero steps in and grabs her wrist. To diffuse the tension, Yuki shows up and lays her hand on Zero, asking him to calm down and you know he growls at her as usual. Later, Yuki and Yori get to meet each other in private. Now, the only reason I'm mentioning Yuki interfering is because she runs away eventually to set up and get ready to meet Yori later in a room uh, far away so that uh, 
the other vampires can't get in the way of them talking, um, she ends up reflecting and thinking about Zero. Like, that hand on him was like making her go nuts. While that's happening, a hunter gets converted into a vampire, controlled to kill Sarah's fiance, Ori, another pure blood, then commanded to stab her own heart by, well, Sarah Shirabuki. She she orchestrates this whole thing, has her fiance killed. Fiance doesn't even fight back. He is down to die for her, I guess. He's lived long enough. But um, this unknown hunter's blood is just slowly filling up the soiree and kind orders Zero, Kaito, and Yagiri to start finding the missing hunter. After the soiree, the event is chalked up as suicide to Yuki and Kaname by kind, but obviously that's not the case. And it's not that Kind doesn't know what's going on. He's just saying that to make Yuki not feel sad or bad. They're still trying to figure out who the pure blood is, but they can't just pin it on somebody without proof. Sarah is slowly growing her vampire harem, so she goes to this all girls academy and she asks a bunch of these girls. And keep in mind, humans also can't resist pure bloods and vampires but specifically pure bloods like if you remember in season one and two of the show all of those girls those fan girls that would line up in front of the night class to say hi to them and they're all like ah. and you know zero and yuki had to keep them at bay well that same charm is working here with all the girls you know um sarah is just wounding them and she asks them if i turn you into a vampire are you okay with that she she reveals her her true self that she's a vampire and that she would love them to the end of the world i don't know she just tells them sweet nothings and she convinces these girls to give consent to be turned into vampires if she has her consent they can't add her to the roster and she can't be hunted down kaname in the manga is struggling with his inner self a part of him wants to replace the void in his heart with Yuki, but the other part of him wants to replace his previous lover and become the new origin metal once the furnace starts losing his power, which, spoiler alert, happens towards the end of the manga. While Kaname is going through his little phase, Zero goes to visit Ichiru's grave and he is going through it. But guess who else is at the graveyard? Yuki with Hanabusa. They go to pay respects to some person at the graveyard when the head of the Toma clan, uh, a pure blood clan, ends up attacking Yuki in his familiar's form, which draws Zero to her scent and he steps in to help her. After Toma disappears, Zero takes Hanabusa and a bleeding Yuki to the Hunters Association that's nearby. While Zero and Yuki are alone, without thinking, Yuki tries to drink Zero's blood, but she snaps back into reality and then she freaks out that she did that and she just runs away and she runs into Kaname's uh, familiar nearby and she just begs him to take her back home because she almost drinks Zero's blood because she was almost honest about her feelings for Zero, I guess. Whatever. She, she's going through a lot. She runs away from Zero in the manga a lot. But anyway, she basically ditches Hanabusa, who is left at the Hunter's Association, right? Uh, and he gives Zero a pep talk. He tells Zero that he, he shouldn't give up so easily on her, Yuki, without putting up a fight. Like... Hanabusa, a Zero, and Yuki shipper? Confirmed. Anyway, um, sadly for Hanabusa, he gets harassed and interrogated by the hunters. Once Yuki returns home, Kaname has Yuki drink his blood so he can share his memories with her. Personally, I think this was a very emotionally manipulative move, but at the same time, it gives us, the viewer, more context and information about Kaname. And if you're like, why does this feel manipulative? Okay, so once Yuki starts seeing all his memories, for some fucking reason, she's all like, oh no, he's not my brother, but my ancestor is such a lonely person. And his lover gave up her life to save humankind. He just wants love. She's like super pitying him. Like she pities him and she eventually does pity fuck him. But anyway, um, he is sharing his memory and there's a moment where his old ancient self, his 10,000 year old self, can see current Yuki. And he shares that, like, hey, I just saw a girl who said my name and blah, blah, blah. 
um, but she's not here. To the lover, and the lover says that some pure bloods can have premonitions and stuff. Like, okay, whatever. And I guess that premonition is the reason why in the future he pursues Yuki to be his lover and shit. Whatever. He's just trying to fill up his his heart with someone new. Uh, uh. While all of that is happening, Sarah ends up converting the CEO of a pharmaceutical company that Takuma's grandpa owned into a vampire because she wants to control him. So that pharmaceutical company is the one responsible for making the blood tablets that the vampires in this universe take. And she wants to tweak the formula a little bit. She wants to add her own little blood this time so that she can, while it gets distributed everywhere, slowly control every single vampire because her blood would be in their system. She wants to be the queen of vampires. So she's getting rid of other pure bloods and she's preparing for a war with the Kurons. Hanabusa's father tells Yuki that if she wants to help Kaname stay off the wrong path, that she needs to get stronger. So after he has a little pep talk with her, he just starts driving home. When he starts driving home, well, he has a driver drive him. So he's in the back seat. He notices Sarah Shirabuki get into a car and he has his driver tail them and they end up at an estate. He sees Kaname kill a pure blood that Sarah had just resurrected. Before Lord Aido knew it, Kaname has the vampire hunting sword in his hand and slashes right through him. Yuki and Hanabusa arrive at the scene and are shocked to see Kaname's actions. Lord Aido dies in Hanabusa's arm. This shakes up Yuki and Hanabusa's loyalty to Kaname. Yuki tries to get the night class reinstated at Cross Academy. She argues with Kain about it and in this heated argument, she unlocks a new power butterfly wings or moth wings or something i don't remember all i know is that i don't remember her using those powers that much maybe in the final fight but not not really so she wants to reinstate the cross academy she wants to help bring vampires and humans back together and bring them closer just like her adaptive dad and she thinks that her status of a, as a kuran might help her she wants to bring back any vampire that wants to come back to cross academy and she's just on a damage control mode because at this point kaname is like causing so much chaos there's so much rumor spreading about him the night class is reinstated. Invitations to attend the school are sent to everybody and one copy goes to Takuma as well. Takuma, if you remember, is Sarah's bitch now. He gets taken into her care and she just tries to use whatever information Takuma has on Kaname to use it against Kaname and she tries to use Takuma as leverage, I guess. He also is kinda on her team he like flip-flops a little bit here and there but sarah says despite being really old that she wants to go to cross academy too so she gets enrolled in the school with her posse there's a lot of tension between yuki and zero and maria kurinai because maria asks yuki if it's okay for her to steal zero from her because you know yuki's kind of made kuran's fiance and all so zero should be up for grabs right <laughs> you know, Yuki says yeah, but she obviously cares because she ends up hiding from Zero when she sees Zero carrying Mar uh, Maria to the night dorm because the sunlight made uh, Maria lightheaded. So he was like, I'll take you and he carries her. Kind Cross declares Kaname a security threat after Kaname possesses the body of the Toma clan head and then has Ruka create the illusion of him being, well, Kaname. Kain ends up fighting with who he thinks is Kaname and slashes him up, but actually the person he slashed up was the Toma clan head, so yeah. That's that's pretty rough. Kaname's just having Kain and other vampires do his dirty work of eradicating pure blood, so it's really funny. <laughs> By volume 17, Sarah offers Zero her blood to get revenge on Kaname after revealing to him that it was Kaname who let Shizuka here free. He takes up the offer. With that, Yuki and Zero head to take down Kaname, who is at this point completely portraying himself as the bad guy, even though we slowly are starting to find out that he's taking credit for some of the stuff that Sarah did and that he didn't do. So some of the purebloods that Sarah has killed, he's saying that he did. Around this time is when the origin metal that is under Cross Academy starts 
slowly losing its ability. Vampire hunter weapons slowly start not working properly. Kaname also reveals in one of the manga panels that he hadn't anticipated Zero to fall in love with Yuki. Ruka had been using her abilities for Kaname to create tons of illusions, including the death of Lord Aideo. In reality, in the end, we learn that he was just sleeping peacefully in a coffin in the Kuran estate, which is a huge relief to Aideo. This was like the only way to make Hanabusa and Yuki lose faith in Kaname. So Yuki tells Ruka that she's too kind and that she should be free of Kaname, and that Kaname has taken advantage of her for far too long. And while they're chatting, Zero and Kaname are battling. When Kaname is about to deal a final blow to Zero, Ruka jumps in to save him for Yuki's sake. Ruka is losing energy and slowly not dying, but I think she's getting really weak. And Yuki offers her blood to help Ruka. And instead of letting Ruka drink from Yuki's wrist, Akatsuki takes a sip of Yuki's blood and mouth feeds it to Ruka. So this way, Ruka wouldn't feel indebted to another pure blood or feel anything of that sort because Akatsuki's done. He's like, yo, Kaname hurt Ruka and this is getting out of hand. We're not going to do Kaname's bidding anymore. We're not going to help him out anymore. And those two dip out and scene for them. By volume 18, the origin metal is going berserk and extending outside of the Cross Academy. And in a slightly anticlimactic way, uh, it pierces through Sarah Shirabuki when she's trying to start a war with people at the Cross Academy and uh, everyone is defending Cross Academy. But that's the end of her. The furnace goes poof. Most hunters' weapons don't work anymore with the exception of Bloody Rose and the Artemis and Kind Sword. The purebloods are rallying a war against Kaname to prevent him from becoming the new furnace because wouldn't it be great if vampire hunters just didn't exist? Despite it being a tense time, Isaiah, one of the purebloods that's Kind's friend, um, he's just he just shows up once or twice. He's just there, but that's why I never mentioned him before. Um, he throws a soiree and at the soiree, Zero and Yuki open up and finally accept their feelings for one another and kiss. I want to say yay, but <laughs> in the final volume, this is volume 18, so in the next volume, the final volume, 19, um, Yuki goes and sleeps with Kaname. <laughs> so, okay, I think in the manga, the author's trying to say that Yuki wanted to take advantage of Kaname possibly having his guard down. Uh, as an opportunity to turn him into human, using her life force to turn him into human, but obviously that doesn't happen. So yeah, she's against Kaname becoming the new furnace, and she wants him to turn into human because she just feels bad that his uh, thirst isn't being quenched. Because after she saw his memories, she's like having hardcore pity for him. I'm, I'm gonna be very honest. I, I just, I feel like the author wasn't very clear with what she wanted from Yuki. I was very confused about Yuki from the beginning to the end. I had a really hard time being able to decipher whether Yuki loved both of them or if she felt pity for one. Because to me, in my interpretation, I felt as if she pitied Kaname a lot because that's how she came off to me. By the end of the final volume, Yuhi decides, for some reason, that she wants to erase Zero's memories. So she erases herself from his memories because she feels as if maybe that was the best way to protect him. I, I think it has a lot to do with the thirst being quenched, right? Because if he doesn't love her or doesn't remember her, he's not going to remember loving her and he's not going to thirst for her blood, right? She completely surrenders herself to Kaname to prevent him from becoming the new origin metal. Kaname out of nowhere turns into a Zero and Yuki shipper, I kid you not, and then tries to provoke Zero to help him, you know, retrieve and recover his memories of Yuki. But then right after he does that and is trying to get those two together, he sleeps with Yuki. <laughs> he encourages her to sleep with him as a form of showing her truest form of love. The Purebloods launch their attack on Cross Academy and everyone is doing their best to uh, protect the place. Zero struggles with his memories because he finds it odd that Yuki, a pureblood vampire, would care so much about him. Because even though Yuki's erased uh, Zero's memories, she still kind of goes up to him and like bugs him. She's still nosy. That's that's the thing. She's still nosy. There's a scene where Isaya, the vampire who threw the soiree, and Yuki are chatting. And he was going to use his life force 
uh, because his wife many years ago had used her life force to turn their only child into a human and the child's long dead now so he's lonely and he's like I'm gonna use my life force to turn Yuki into a human because Kaname requested it. But Yuki's freaking out and she's distressed and so Zero steps in and pulls her away and boom bam, just like that, he suddenly remembers who Yuki is to him. So while this is happening, Kaname makes his way down to the furnace and throws his heart in the furnace and becomes the new metal origin. Yuki and Zero are there to say goodbye to him. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> so after he throws his heart into the furnace, Kine and the other aristocrat vampires have uh, Kaname's body seal sealed up just in case one day he wakes up and whatnot. And immediately I was like, why didn't Kaname do that for his lover? Because when the furnace explodes and blows and goes wild after it kills uh, Sarah Shirabuki, um, we do get to see in the manga um, his lover appear before him and kiss him before she just evaporates, right? So if, if she had a body to return to, if her soul had a body to return to, would she be alive? Question mark? Why, why didn't he do that with his lover is my question. But anyway, um, the hunter weapons are back and functioning and the bloody rose is more powerful than before. Zero steps out with his new gun and Yuki steps out with her Artemis to stop all the vampires that are outside and rioting and fighting, right? And I'm assuming they stop the fight because there's like a time skip uh, narration that happens. It, and it goes like, there's like a thousand year skip. And during this time, Hanabusa ends up completing Konami's research to figure out how to turn vampires into humans. And after all the vampires are given the medicine, the fire in the furnace is put out. Uh, there are two girls that come to send Kaname a message who wakes up from his slumber. One of the girls we can assume is Kaname and Yuki's and the other is Zero and Yuki's. Um, Kaname would have been too weak to use the medicine, so Yuki uses her life force to turn him into a human and hopes that his thirst can be finally quenched. And if you're like, girl, you rushed the ending so fast. No, I'm not kidding. The ending is like super fast. Like as soon as Kaname throws his heart into the furnace and becomes the new origin metal, there's like immediately after Zero and Yuki step outside, there's immediately like a time skip. It, it goes fast. I was like, damn, this is the end? So yeah, like the ending was fast fast just like two pages fast two three pages of illustration fast um they did not want to spend i actually i think that's what vampire memories is vampire night memories the, the sequel i think that has to do with yuki and zero's time together in that 1000 years together so i think it's safe to say that vampire night is a polyamorous love story right it's a weird one, especially since family and vampires are involved. Kaname, well, overall thought of Kaname, I did not feel bad for Kaname. All my homies hate Kaname, except for Angelica. She hates Yuki more. I definitely forgot that Kaname was related to Yuki. I don't know why I did not remember Kaname being Yuki's older brother or in season two, that being the big reveal. I, I don't know why I don't remember that. <laughs> I just consume stuff without thinking as an 11 year old. I, I just, it's such a different, oh my god, it's such a different experience re-watching this. Because when I was a kid, this was my shit. This was the anime world's twilight. Um, like, <laughs> why did I not remember Kaname being Yuki's brother? Wow, that is, what are your thoughts on Vampire Night? Have you ever seen Vampire Night? Um, did you like it as a kid like I did? I look at the little decoration I have done of the manga chapters, I mean vo manga volumes that I own. Before I end this video, I also wanted to recommend a romance comic called Veil vale, uh, by Koteri. I think that's how you say the author's name. So I just kind of wanted to get this on your radar. It's about a romance between a blind woman and a police officer and the art style is so beautiful. I love all of the covers. It's so pretty. It's such a pretty looking manga. I, I just love it. It's my current favorite other than um, Goodbye My Rose Garden, which is a girl love manga that I also recommend and it only has three volumes. So if you're interested in that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Meow Tower now. Bye bye.